Hey everybody, in today's video we're going to be doing a little bit of aluminum recycling by turning an aluminum can into alum, uh, which is a pretty useful chemical that forms really beautiful crystals. So I drink a lot of soda, and uh, particularly of Mountain Dew, so I end up with a lot of spare cans that I've always wanted to find something to do with. Um, so this can weighs 13.5 grams thereabouts. So the first step in making it into alum is to react it with potassium hydroxide to make uh, potassium aluminate. Um, now, the can, of course, is not entirely aluminum. I think it's bits and pieces of it are, are actually an alloy of different uh, metals. Then you got the label, and then there's a uh, layer of plastic on the inside to protect the aluminum from the acidity of the drink. Um, so the actual aluminum content's a little bit less than that. However, uh, potassium hydroxide is always composed of uh, 10 to 15 percent water. Uh, so we have to account for that as well. So stoichiometry tells me that I need 28 grams to react with that amount of aluminum, but we're going to bump it up to about 30 uh, to account for those two things. Okay, now we'll dissolve that in about 200 milliliters of water. So I've cut my can into a bunch of smaller pieces so that it'll hopefully react a bit faster. Uh, now we're just going to pop this into the potassium hydroxide solution. Uh, and the reason that I'm doing this outside is because this produces hydrogen as one of the uh, products. Uh, and generally anything, you know, hydrogen is not terribly dangerous unless it's confined and then of course it's, it's uh, flammable. Uh, but anything that produces gases, I like to do outside just because it always throws up little tiny droplets of the solution and uh, that can be irritating. So you can see some of the pieces are already reacting uh, pretty vigorously. You can see the bubbles, especially from the cut sides. So it's going to take a while for the hydroxide to work its way through the uh, label and the plastic. So the cool thing about using potassium hydroxide first is that uh, aluminum is amphoteric. So that means it can react as either an acid or a base. And uh, not a lot of metals do that. So by reacting it with the base first, we should get the aluminum in solution and uh, keep all the other garbage out as a precipitate. So I've left everything to react for about three hours, and you can see that the uh, can is completely destroyed now. Um, and there's a lot of gray material just floating around in there, uh, as well as bits and pieces of the label and plastic. So all of that needs to be filtered off. It's still bubbling around a little bit, but I think the, the majority of the aluminum has been reacted. So I poured all the solution through the filter and interestingly you can see the uh, volume has decreased significantly. So we're down to uh, about 125 milliliters when I started with a little over 200. Uh, and I think that's because the chemical reaction that happens to form a potassium aluminate um, requires water. So it uses up some of the water of the solution. So I thought that was kind of neat. So now that we've got our solution of potassium aluminate we need to neutralize it by using sulfuric acid. So that's what I've made in the uh, beaker here. Um, I used, stoichiometry told me I needed 52.5 milliliters of my 98% concentrated acid. Um, and I diluted that by adding it to 75 milliliters of water. It's orange because the acid I used has this dye in it. It's, it's a drain cleaner acid. So anyways, I'm just gonna add this uh, slowly to the uh, aluminate solution and first it's going to produce a precipitate of aluminum hydroxide and this type of precipitate is always very gelatinous uh, which gives my stir bars a lot of trouble so I'm just going to add it like this and uh, stir it around manually So as the acid is added, there's actually two reactions that happen. The first one precipitates solid aluminum hydroxide, uh, but then as more acid is added, uh, we get the precipitate to dissolve. So you can see it's really gelatinous now, uh, but as I add more and more acid, that precipitate dissolves, uh, and we end up with a, a nice clear solution again.
this also produces a lot of heat so at the end of this edition you can see that it starts to bubble a bit it's fizzing around so there's nothing in there that should produce any gases so I imagine that's got to be from the water itself boiling so I actually put it in the fridge for a little while to cool it down uh, until I finished adding the acid and you can see now that it's quite a bit more uh, liquid and fluid so I thought the endpoint of the acid addition would be easy to spot because all the precipitate would dissolve but Apparently I was wrong, uh, and that's because I didn't use enough water. So you can see all the precipitate here now. Uh, it's very uh, crystalline as opposed to the uh, sort of gelatinous aluminum hydroxide that was there before. So this is a much more granular type of powder. So this actually is the uh, product that I want. However, if we look at the top here, there's still some clumps of hydroxide in there, I think. Uh, they may be hydroxide, I'm not actually sure, but what I need to do is add more water, dissolve everything, just to make sure that everything has been reacted completely. So I'll add 200 milliliters to uh, double the volume, and hopefully that will get everything to dissolve. And if it doesn't, I might have to heat it a little bit. So after adding all that water and applying a good bit of heat, I've gotten everything to dissolve. So that means the reaction is complete since all of the aluminum hydroxide has re-dissolved. And uh, I didn't add quite all of the acid, uh, but I think that's due to the weight of the can is not entirely aluminum. So that throws off my calculations a little bit. But now that this is ready to go, uh, I'm just going to turn off the stirring and the heat and uh, let it cool down and precipitate the crystals. Oh, and by the way, uh, here's the filter paper from when I uh, first filtered everything. You can see all the, the gray stuff initially has now been uh, turned to brown. So I think that suggests that one of the impurities uh, in the aluminum is iron because now it's, it's been exposed to air and it has rusted. So I thought that was interesting. Now that the solution's cooled down, we've got some crystals that have started to grow, so that's a good sign. So I noticed something that's really, really interesting. Look above the crystal here, you can see there's a, a stream of uh, something coming off of it. I don't even know what to call that, um, but it's rising off of the crystal uh, and, and going up to the top of the solution. That is very interesting. I really don't know what that is. My guess is that when the solution cooled and precipitated these crystals, uh, once it was cool, they started to go back into solution. So, I, I my guess is that this crystal is redissolving into solution, and it's it's making this stream of dissolved solids coming off the top of it, and it's really really cool, whatever it is. So after leaving the solution to sit for a few days, quite a few crystals have come out of solution, and they're quite nice. They're really pretty, um, and they're nice big crystals. So that's that's a really good sign as far as uh, purity goes. So I'm going to let this solution uh, evaporate almost all the way uh, and pour off the remaining liquid. Usually you evaporate it down to about 10% of the original volume uh, and that helps to increase purity. And, and I'll probably afterwards perform a recrystallization uh, again just to uh, get really high purity on these things. And if you want to know more about how to do crystallizations, uh, you can see my other video on purifying over-the-counter reagents. So once I've recovered all that I'm going to get, I'll uh, put a note at the end of this video saying what my yield was. Thanks for watching.